Welcome to the introduction for graded assignment number three in the Java unit. Um, this is Tech Jobs NVC edition. So um, you're going to continue to be working on a new version of this Tech Jobs app where you're going to be creating a spring. Actually, you don't have to create the spring uh, application. It's already been done for you, but you're going to um, fill out more of the code. In fact, this assignment has more um, even more you know, code that they've already written than the last one did. And a huge part of this assignment is making sure you understand what all that is and how it works. Um, in fact, that's what they talk about um, first. So let's just look at this. Uh, the objectives is going to be um, that you, you know, can read and understand the code that they've already written, that you know how to uh, work within these controller and view portions. You're not gonna have to do anything with the models, um, but, um, you want to use timely syntax to display things in certain ways. Um, and then, of course, uh, being able to write new handler methods within those controllers to process the form submission when it comes through and then you know route it back to a page where those results are displayed. So um, it's a it's a you know pretty decent program, but it is uh, actually just considered a minimum um, viable product, which you know, just means it's it's a basic proof of concept kind of app that just shows what it's done. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not pretty because they've actually um, used some CSS and also some bootstrap classes to make it look nice. Um, but it is, you know, it's very straightforward. It's simple um, and it, it's just utilitarian. So uh, you're going to take this code. You're going to um, fill out the rest of what needs to be done and then um, the rest of it should be functional. So they talk here about, um, you know, the different tasks that you're going to be doing and, uh, you know, some of the code that you want to make sure and, and a little bit of understanding here about kind of what she did, what she hasn't done that you need to finish. Um, so if we go through these sections, which of course are also linked here on the left, the very first thing, just like the last assignment, the very first thing is just to get to know the code that exists. This is very important. Um, read this through very carefully, uh, refer to the code um, as you're reading it so that you can find um, what uh, they're talking about and look and see how it relates to other things. Uh, go through this at least once. Um, it could be that when you get to the end of it and after you've looked at everything that they talk about in these different files, that you'll say, okay, I want to go back through it again because now that I have the big, you know, the full picture, if I read this again, some other things, you know, are going to connect for me. It's going to connect some more dots. Um, I would, you know, definitely advise doing that. The other thing, um, you know, there's there's tricks that you can do in IntelliJ to help you see what's where. So, like for example, um, this list jobs by you know column and value method. Um, if we come in here and we go to uh, the list controller, um, and actually that that particular one is not going to be here. Okay, let's look at this one instead. Find by column and value. Uh, you can, you know, double click to select something here like this, and then, um, use, uh, shift command F if you're on a Mac or shift control F, I think it is on a, on a PC, it will bring up all of the places where this particular thing can be found anywhere in the entire, um, project structure. So like all the folders, so you can jump around and see, okay, it's in, uh, here in the controller. That's where we, you know, found it. We can also go over here to um, the README and find it in a couple places there. We can go to job data um, and find it, you know, where it's defined here. We can also see that it's being used in some of the unit testing. So anything you want to find, if you want to find all of the locations so you can see where is this thing being defined, um, where is it actually being used, uh, this type of search can be really useful. Um, and that'll help you get to know the code better and make sure you understand. So they, they talk about the home controller, the list controller, and you want to make sure to look through this carefully. So you understand all these, all these different parts. Uh, this is going to be the one that's done the most for you. The search controller is where you're going to have to write a second handler. So it's only partially done. And then there are a couple of fragments and the fragment files existing for the, um, head and the header. Um, but you eventually will be adding a third fragment to simplify your code between both the list and search views because you're going to have something that you can use in common for both of them. Um, so you'll want to take a look at that. 
So if we go over here and look at it, I've already got it spun up here from the main branch um, with the starter code. You can see the main, you know, the home page has just um, the header here that has the uh, links to search and list, but it also has the links here. Um, if you come over to list, you can see that they already have these lists, you know, position type, employer, skill, location. And if you click on any one of these to view the job uh, jobs that are associated with this particular um, you know, employer, for example, there's nothing here. So this is one of the things you're going to do is actually finish displaying um, the job information um, on this page. But they do have a lot of this here done here for you, except for um, there's no link in this column here. That's something else you'll do later. Um, so, you know, they're going to talk about that, both the list view and also the list jobs um, uh, HTML file. Uh, those are the two you'll be working in. And then the search view. So if you go over to the search view right now, you can see there's a search. And if you click, I mean, there's not even a handler for that, right? Um, and you can see that it's going to search slash results, but there's no handler. So that's something you'll be doing is filling that out. Um, so get to know what they have already for that page. And then you'll, you know, kind of be able to understand later what it is you need to add as they walk you through it um, down here in task four. Um, so the last part is just to make sure you know where it is you're supposed to add code. And that's where these to-dos come in. Um, so if you come over to here and you come down to the very bottom and click on to-do, you'll see it says found four to-do items in four files. So I can expand these and see that I've got them in four different places. To-do number one, um, is in list jobs and to do number two is in list.html. That corresponds with uh, task two here, complete the list views. Task three, completing the search controller, that is the uh, to do number three here over in search controller. And then task four is to display the results. So something uh, I'll just mention now in case I forget to mention it later is that when you do this part of, of completing the search controller, there's no way to test it out to make sure it's displaying what you think it's displaying until you complete task four. So you're kind of going to have to do both of these and then you'll be able to test in the browser if, um, and you might have to go back and make some changes to your controller if things aren't, uh, like data isn't being passed in the way you thought it was or something like that. Um, those two kind of go hand in hand, three and four. Um, but those, yeah, those correspond to um, tasks three and four. Okay, so that'll help you know where to put your code. And of course, you can click on these and jump around to see them. Um, all right, so that's, uh, you know, the first part, make sure you understand what's already here, you know, go through and test things and, um, you know, check things, you can even, you know, pull up the dev tools if you want to, to make sure you understand, you know, what's where, um, you know, click, click on things to you know, make sure you understand where things are coming from. Um, whatever helps you make sure that you really understand the existing app as it is before you start adding any code. Very important. Okay. So um, if you go into task two, uh, this is where they're going to talk about how to pr uh, present the jobs that respond to whatever it was you clicked on in the lists. Um, so you're gonna need to uh, show the full job listings. Now, something that they give you, and I think it was on the previous page, um, they actually show you that, that they have their own, yeah, in fact, let me go find it for you. So I wanna make sure that you know um, where to get it, where to get the link from. Maybe it was on the original page. Let me, uh, let me go back to the very first page. Dun, 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 dun. Aha, okay. So here it is on this page, um, on uh, the, the initial kind of introduction it, down here, it says refer to our demo app. If you click on this, it opens up this, um, you know, uh, demo that they've got at launchcodetechnicaltraining.org. Um, and it gives you uh, the final, you know, finished thing, except for not with bonus missions. So before, um, you know, I, I showed you how these columns were in place, but this was not. This one will take you and it'll present all the jobs. And these are the little tables that you're going to be doing for the, the list views. Um, and so if you go back and like click on, you know, just one of them, like say just, you know, just the QA jobs, um, then you'll see, you know, a limited list here of just uh, five jobs. Each one of them looks, you know, the, the table is the same. It's This is looped over. Um, but it has unique data for each job um, object. So 
uh, that's what you're that's what you're moving toward. And this is going to help you kind of see what is it you know that I'm doing. So um, make sure that when you are working on these tasks, you are referring back to this because honestly, when I was coding um, this, you know, looped, uh, these looped table for this very first part, I just sat here and looked at this and this is kind of what I went off of in order to, uh, you know, get the code written. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's really important to know what you're shooting for. Uh, they do tell you here, you know, um, make sure you add the CSS class job listing to the table. Um, so just follow these things one by one, um, make sure it looks like this when you have, you know, any sort of result that you get from clicking on one of these links that it will go back. Um, the view all is what it comes later um, in the app. That's actually, let's see, let's go back to the instructions. That's the, uh, this second part here. So this is, this one is to do number one. This one is to do number two in the code. Um, so once you've done that, then you'll have a way to actually view uh, all of the jobs. Um, they offer you two different ways to do it. This is the second one and what I recommend. Um, I mean, there's a couple different ways to do it, but uh, yeah, I, I think this is very straightforward um, doing it the second way, number two down here. Um, task three is to complete the search controller. So basically, basically you're just gonna be preparing um, all of, of the uh, data that you're gonna be receiving. So if we go back to, yeah. The search page here. Um, these all this information that's in this file. So if you go to search um, search.html and you see that uh, it's got these two inputs, right? First is all the radio buttons, and then there's the search term. Um, and they have they have their own names. Um, you can see exactly what the uh, variables need to be. So when you're working in the controller, um, you'll be able to uh, make sure that your information, the controller uh, can process this correctly. Pay attention to this form tag. What's the action? What's the method? You need to know that so that when you set up the things in the controller, you're setting it up accordingly um, as you've been taught. So uh, that's important. Um, and then you'll just set everything up to be able to take whatever is submitted from here and create the correct data to send back to um, the search page here, you know, before submission. And then, um, I mean, after submission and it's the same template. So then to do number four, which is this part right here, displaying the search results. This is where you're just going to uh, display results and they're going to look just like this. Um, well, okay, let me go over to the demo app. <laughs> um, actually, I'll just do it like this. How's that? Um, position type. Let's say uh, I'll search on the term analyst. So we get, um, you know, project manor, uh, manager analyst, quality assurance analyst. So um, you're seeing all these results, but you're seeing it below on the same page. So this is where they talk about how it's a good idea to just reuse the code you already put on the list page where um, on, on a list you click on you know, QA and you get the exact same results, right? It just sends you here. Um, you can use it twice and then you just make it a fragment instead and then just replace um, the table in both pages uh, with this fragment so that you only have to have the code once. Um, pay attention, you know, the, the instructions are actually very well written. Um, if you go through things uh, one at a time, it's going to work for you. There's a couple more things I wanna point out um, because of course, we get to the very end here, and one of the things they tell you to do on the submitting um, your work and bonus missions is to do a sanity check and make sure the tests are passing. There are some tests that are very particular, and I didn't have any trouble with most of them, but I did run into some of them for task three. And one thing is that it's particular about what order your parameters are in. So it tells you you need the model parameter. It also tells you you need two other parameters for those uh, the, the search type and the search term that's coming from those input fields, um, make sure you put them in this order because um, parameter, you know, model, and then the, the type of search and then the search term uh, because the tests actually are looking for them in that order. Um, also, uh, I ran into uh, an issue with, um, they talk about using the correct annotation here for these two parameters that represent 
the input from the form. Um, something that I taught you in my lectures is that you really only need to use that annotation once and then you can just list them all after it and it applies it. But the test, uh, the unit tests that Launch Code wrote are expecting to see the annotation on both of them. So you need to use it twice uh, to get the, that one of those tests passing. Uh, the third thing is that um, when you are doing, let me see if I can find an example. So in the um, search controller, for example, I'm sorry, the list controller, you know, this starts with um, localhost 8080 slash list, right? Um, if we come over here and just click on list, that's the wrong one. Let me do this one. There we go. Localhost 8080 slash list. And then if we actually go to, um, you know, the jobs, we go to slash list slash jobs. And then of course it has the query parameters with the specific information um, that is passed down from those links, um, which is definitely code you need to look at and understand. And they do explain that a little bit how this works. Uh, but back to my original point, um, if you look at the code, you can see here, for example, that it just says value equals jobs. There's no slash in front. You may have seen me model it um, where I typically will put the slash in. Uh, and it works, it works both ways, depending on how everything's set up. Um, they're looking for no slash. So if you want your test to pass, just make sure you're leaving that slash off like they've done here. And, um, that should work. Those were the things I ran into. I'm sure you're going to run into other hitches. Really what it comes down to is it's going to tell you which test it came from when you run all the tests from here, um, like this, it'll tell you, uh, in the results down in the panel down here which one um, you're looking at. So if you you know, fail test and test tax three, go look at it. Say, so what is it that they're looking for? Read these tests and make sure you understand you know, what these assertions are that they're making and what the, um, you know, they've got messages here that'll help you understand exactly what it is they're looking for. And that's gonna help you figure out what you need to change to make the test pass. Um, just so you can get past that hump of, of the, you know, the little uh, nuances. But honestly, um, ultimately, if you're, program is working, you know, if you test the heck out of it, all different which ways, especially on the search, you know, one test different keywords with different um, types and all, and um, make sure it's working in all the ways that it's supposed to. And it's, you know, doing it just like the demo app is when you demo that for your TA, then that should be pretty good, but make an effort to pass the test. I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes um, it's not hard to, to make it uh, work the way they want it to work. Um, just to pass the test. And so it's worth kind of working that out. Okay, so they tell you uh, here, you know, the testing, the submission instructions, bonus missions, there are several bonus missions. There's even a super bonus mission. That's a big challenge. Um, if you have time, uh, absolutely go for this. Uh, there's a great additional functionality, better user experience that you can add by doing some of these things. Um, and there's also, you know, this one is um, a lot of, uh, it really is actually less about user experience and more just about, you know, better coding, um, you know, making better choices with how it is that you're using your controller and using um, your views and things. So um, yeah, uh, feel free to, you know, jump on those if, if you've got the time. Uh, this is a pretty big assignment in a lot of ways. They don't ask you to actually do that much, but a huge part of it is just understanding how it works. And that's important. Um, you know, when you are, going to be graduating from launch code, uh, it's important that you feel like you've got a pretty so solid understanding of these things. And that's why we have these graded assignments that you need to tackle on your own um, so that launch code can you know, try to place you into an apprenticeship and say, this person has the skills. They have proven it. They've done these assignments. So I know that these are hard um, working through this, but these follow these directions carefully, spend a lot of time in the beginning getting to know the code, um, through here. And I think that you're going to find that um, things will fall into place. All right. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next one.